So today I'm in Bastrop, Texas. A fort was established in 1804 near the current location of Bastrop by Spanish soldiers along the Colorado River. Later in 1832, the town was platted and initially named Bastrop. However, it was renamed Mina in honor of a Mexican revolutionary hero. In 1837, after Texas won its independence, it was changed back to Bastrop. A fire in 1862 destroyed most of the town. However, 131 buildings in town are in the National Register of Historic Places, and I'll try to show a few of those to you today. Cotton was important to the local economy in the early years. In the early 1900s, coal mining became important after the largest deposit of lignite in Texas was discovered. Coal mining in this part of Texas ended just a few years ago in 2017 as coal power plants fell out of favor. Bastrop may be most famous for its location in the Lost Pines Forest of Texas, an isolated stand of pine trees in a relatively semi-arid portion of the state. I do think that the geology and the local topography being very hilly play a role in why these pine trees are able to live and thrive here. This represents the westernmost stand of the southern pine forest that stretches from the Atlantic to Texas. Lumber was shipped to Austin, San Antonio, and even to northern Mexico. In September of 2011, unfortunately, during a very severe drought, a massive forest fire occurred here and proved to be the most destructive in Texas history, destroying 1,691 homes. Eleven years later, the obvious scars of this fire still remain. So this is one of many historic homes that you can see here in Bastrop. The Morris Mansion Bed and Breakfast. So this bed and breakfast is currently not open at this time, but still a beautiful home that you can see as you drive around or walk around Bastrop. Another historic home is the HP Luckett House, also at the site of the Bastrop Military Institute. This beautiful historic home is now the Pecan Street Inn. So right next to the library is this incredibly beautiful 1895 Bastrop Christian Church. So this is a building that I found rather interesting. This is the Paul Quinn African Methodist Episcopal Church. Its cornerstone was laid in the year 1886. There is opportunity for paddling the Colorado River here in Bastrop. The Bastrop River Company does offer canoes and kayaks during the warmer months for rent. I'm sure they have a pickup site somewhere down the river. The water is surprisingly clear right here. So this is the Bastrop County Museum. And I've heard there's some really nice exhibits here that detail the history of coal mining in this area. To be honest, I didn't realize that Bastrop was along the El Camino Real. So the timber industry was very important to the local economy and the heart of the Lost Pines. The CCC was helpful in developing the local state parks. The Baron de Bastrop, influential in helping Moses Austin get permission to bring settlers to Texas. Very nice museum here, I highly recommend it. This gives you a lot of information about the local and state history.
there were several training facilities and camps set up for the World War II effort. And one of them was at Camp Swift right here in Bastrop. So I must say, this was the exhibit I was looking forward to the most. In the first half of the 1900s, multiple coal mining communities popped up across Bastrop County. You can see with this historical map, they stretched out to the north of town here. Largest deposit of lignite in the state. And so this is a historical photo from one of the larger coal mining communities. Many of these coal miners came from Mexico. So I almost missed this perspective here. Really nice how they've done this. It looks like mine cart stretching way out into the distance there. One of the last coal mines to be in operation in this part of Texas was the Three Oaks Mine here near Elgin. And it closed down for good in the year 2018 as coal mining fell out of favor. I'm standing at a gate at the edge of this old coal mine and you can see right now land reclamation efforts are currently underway as this coal mine is no longer in operation. Here's another view looking down into that coal mine from a distance right off of an old county road. So I'm way up here in northern Bastrop County in the tiny little town of McDade. This is a really interesting little place along the highway here, but really cute. Here's the McDade Historical Museum. It appears to be closed right now. Rockfront Saloon, 1870, stagecoach stand. So on a back road just to the northwest of town is the Lower Elgin Road Bridge. It goes over a small creek. Looks like it's pretty safe to walk on. So just to the southwest of town is the little historic community of Rockney, named after Notre Dame coach Newt Rockney. And here we have a museum. So many early settlers came in through Indianola. And now there's nothing left but a historical marker there. So on the grounds of the Rockney Museum are a couple of cool cabins with that classic Texas frontier architecture. Wow, 1860. Lee Smokehouse. Late 1800s wagon. And last we have the 1858 John Lehman cabin built by German immigrants. So just east of the community of Rockney is Waterson Hall. And it's my understanding they still have dances every weekend and you can get here early and get yourself a hamburger and a drink and get yourself some energy for a long night of dancing. So I was just informed that a scene from the movie Hope Floats starring Sandra Bullock was filmed right here in this dance hall. And it is beautiful. 
one of the nicer ones I've seen on the inside. If you're into haunted houses, just to the south of town is Scream Hollow. I hear it's one of the best around. And starting this February, the Texas Halloween History Museum opens up year-round. And I hear it's the only one of its kind in the world. This place is huge. Covers, he said, multiple football fields in size. So, looks like a fantastic place if you like to get scared once in a while. For some great food, come to the gas station restaurant. <laughs> 